Ladies and gentlemen, I hope your bodies are ready because we're not going to go easy on you this time. We are having SPT face of BTG Tetra. And quite honestly, right now, I couldn't think of a more hyped matchup than this one. Same. We finally... <coughs> excuse me. What happened to my throat there? We finally saw some weakness in BTG earlier on today versus the one. Now they go up against the previous phases champions in the form of SPT. SPT sitting a little bit lower than the one in terms of the standings, however. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. SPT are currently only one point behind beyond the game. But SPT do have a game in hand. That is correct. So SPT, of course, you know, coming in with a little bit of an advantage over BTG in terms of points right now. But that is about to be settled once and for all. Who is going to maintain that solid lead there at the top? Is SPT uh, able to close in the gap at least a little bit? Or will BTG recover from that draw that they had to, uh, you know, face early against the one and take another three-pointer home? Now, Tetcher, if, if I asked you as a fellow HCC China expert, um, who would you uh, consider the more dominant or the more scary team right now? The one or SPT? I'd it's kind of hard say... to say, isn't it? I'd say SPT. The one definitely had a shaky start, whereas SPT still as good as pretty much always yep by the way i think you are a little uh robot right now um oh uh i will try rejoining the call one sec okay all right while tetra is getting back on my call i'm going to introduce that team to you known as the super perfect team they're gonna face beyond the game the legendary squad that only today suffered the first loss in their young phase two career tetra give us a shot uh, hello How's it going? Is it better? You sound way better, friend. Wunderbar. As we have <laughs> BTG looking to regain some honor after yep. their loss earlier on. Did the one mate were the one just playing really well, or did they perhaps find a weakness in removing that Yarel of Loktar? We will be finding out very shortly. All right. It is probably the best case scenario for SPT right now. If uh BTG had won the series dominantly 2-0, then I think uh, not only would they have had to try even harder, but beyond the game would have also been in a better mental state right now. When you lose your perfect streak, it certainly doesn't go unnoticed, but it is now up to beyond the game to maintain that mental fortitude as we look into the two key players, Misaka and Dancing. The main tank, main shot caller on the one hand, and the main damage dealer assassin on the other. We're going to start off with a classic for SBT, the Battlefield of Eternity. Yep. They do very much like this map. We're actually going to see that they banned out Braxis as their second, whereas BTG are trying to avoid Cursed Hollow. Absolutely true. Cursed Hollow, one of those uh, maps as well in China that doesn't really see a lot of play as to compare to other regions. Tomb and Curse definitely more frequently seen there. Uh, but yeah, first game on BOE promises to be a... Uh, Heated map, a heated battleground with Hanzo finally being removed. I love that because so many times in China have we seen Hanzo go through on BOE with his superior PvE damage, just creating so much of a power spike for the team that is fielding him. I'm going to see that white main getting removed as well. Once again, BTG seeming to avoid it. Could this be potentially a thing with Druid? His hero pool might also mm -hmm. be getting called into question. Yeah. Uh, that's what we've been uh, saying earlier as well, right? They were the ones actually having first pick as well, Tetcher. So Beyond the Game could have potentially picked the white main if SPT hadn't banned it. So them banning it themselves maybe hints towards a little bit of a uh, disliking of Druid on that hero. Either he doesn't play it well or he simply doesn't like it. Or maybe he I says, you know, she's not as good when I play her. So better just ban it away. Anyway, Decker Kane, that's definitely the Druid pick. Super solid. Deco Kane also opens up so many other heroes that SPT now needs to worry about. Could be the Sergeant Hammer, could be the Rainer. They, all those stationary, slow moving, consistent pokers like the two heroes that I mentioned are so good with Decker Kane. So, SPT, what is their opening? Did Lee Ming, speaking of pokers, and the mm -hmm. Garrosh coming in. This seems to be a theme, even with Diablo available. Garrosh seems to be a high pick priority yeah. for SPT at the moment, just due to uh, the ability to have more control on this map, at least, over tossing people into the immortal stuns. Good news for BTG fans out there. Loctar is back on Irel. 
struggle a little bit on that Lyric when they had to suffer the first loss in their face career here against the one. So now he's back on his favorite girl. Uh, Li Ming, though, as we said, a Melody C standard pick. He's probably one of the most frightening Li Mings that we have in China. Diablo now being banked because Diablo traditionally does very well against Li Ming. He has a massive body capable of intercepting skill shots. And because of his high HP pool uh, and his p potential to actually go for Soul Shield at level 1, it's very hard to take down for Li Mings. There's the Sergeant Hammer removed. So what else is going to synergize with this? With Hanzo removed, with Li Ming taken, Rainer on the board if he decides to go for the Exterminator. What else are we looking at in terms mm -hmm. of Immortal Races? The Greymane could Grey be coming. Mane, yeah. Artanis, that... if you want to take a leaf out of the A-Team's book, as they did try that earlier on in the phase. Didn't even look too shabby, did it? No. It, it lost because it was against BTG, but it yeah. certainly did some good racing potential. Absolutely true. Then, of course, there is heroes like Lunara, which uh, are sometimes being overlooked here a little bit. Strong racing potential as well for her. I mean, if Beyond the Game wants to go crazy... They might even consider a mage here. Uh, I definitely don't hate Jaina, for example. Probably the burstiest of mage we have. Nope. They go for Zeratul, though. That smells like an LK hero right there. Even Alaric right. would have been possible, Tetcher. We totally uh, didn't mention it. No, completely forgot about that. So instead, they have the Zeratul, which is interesting because they don't have any Wombo for that Zeratul. Mm. But they do certainly just have a lot of single target damage. So yeah. they can just blow up the Li Ming here, for example. Which is why, looking at this composition, I wouldn't be too surprised to see this being a oh, Mike of the Nerezim. There, there is the Artanis for Super Perfect Team. Immortal Race very much in the favor of SPT right now. Blinds for Dancing, the main damage dealer, makes sense. But yeah, I would not be surprised to see this being a Might of the Nerezim Zeratul. And as you said, yeah, Might of the Nerezim, I totally agree with you. That was actually the first thought I had in mind as well. You know, to deal with the Junkrat, to deal with the Li Ming, they're all very squishy. But yeah, Tetra, you brought it up so nicely there as well. It was the A team that played Artanis against BTG, and they were almost at the cusp of winning. Only because of some late game decision making mistakes, I feel like they were able uh, to lose it. And I think BT, uh, sorry, SBT here, their opponents, they might have actually watched that game very closely, did some replay analysis and be like, hey, if we play our tennis and we just play it a little more cleanly, more crisply, we might actually be able to win this against BTG. And I can't recall if Soap has ever played our tennis, but I'm super stoked to see him on that hero. Same. It is a not a usual SBT pick. It's other teams that were really willing to experiment with this. SBT, they have been so glued to standard for so long one of the issues that we did have with them as a team. But Artanis, nope. This is definitely, at least with this roster, mm -hmm. the first SPT Artanis. I will check Soap specifically, just to be sure. Yep, he probably played it... Well, I'm actually not sure, because when he started playing professionally, he was the main tank for a little while, so... Um, yes. Did he has played it twice total. I can't see the exact times he's played it, but he has a 100% win rate on it. Ooh, a beast in the making here. Let's see what Soap is going to make happen with this Artanis. Could it be a triple kill, triple win scenario for him? Let's find out, ladies and gentlemen, while we introduce the teams here for you guys. On the left-hand side, it is the team known as the Super Perfect Team with Lucky, Melody C, Misaka, Soap, and ZZH. And on the right, it is Beyond the Game. 619, LLK, Druid, Dancing, and Loctar are looking for redemption after going 1-1 earlier against the one. That is the question, ladies and gentlemen, Tetcher. Have they woken the giant that is now angry and mad that his perfect slumber has been interrupted? Or is BTG now going to show more signs of weakness? Are they going to drop more games? Now, Murden already going in. A double stun coming in from Gyarash as the response. Locks are dropping low. Artan is tanking through already on the chase. Good flip the into swap. the Locked up first blood. Melody C looks for a second after getting the reset, but not able to get in range. But a great swap into the Malfurion route then. Yeah, that was so well played by Soap. We mentioned him before. He just patiently waited for the perfect time to actually drop the swap jump dash combo. Because sometimes as an Artanis, you're using it too early, you're using it too prematurely. But if you have patience, which is a virtue, then you will lock down those kills. And in the meanwhile, while they were actually waiting for Loctar to return, Zertul did a little bit of soaking in the meantime. So not too much experience was lost already. 
Uh, but BTG definitely feeling the pain there a little bit. They should not underestimate that Artanis played by Soap. But Artanis is now uh, has to deal with a top lane <laughs> against a Yorel. A matchup that Artanis just kind of does not win, frankly. So he needs to just survive, clear the lane, and prepare for the objective where he will start to come into his own. Yeah, it's pretty much a 50-50 situation there, I think. As long as none of the players heavily misplays, I think neither Yorel nor Artanis should have the upper hand, tremendously at least. Well, okay, though, gets rooted, takes a little bit of damage there as well. We see the uh, amateur opponent coming in for Artanis, by the way, so definitely focusing on the PvE racing potential, dancing, taking a big combo by Melody C. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think we've ever seen a different level one on Artanis. Actually, no, we have uh, back when he was sort of used, like, a mm -hmm. year and a half ago. But it's almost always amateur opponent, which is why he's almost only seen on this map. Because yep. of his immense immortal clear speed, especially once you get that triple strike. You get the follow for the route as well. Muradin. Oh. Are you kidding me? Beautifully done. Classic combo from Lucky. That combo couldn't have been played any more perfect. From start to finish, the roots followed in by the toss and Garrosh into the knockback, into the trap. Murden just made a cruise around the world of pain. Nicely done indeed. As level four is online for SBT, they begin to work on their Fallen Shaman camp. Well, BTG, they are going to get some Impalers. They already have Murden. He was hovering around the Fallen Shaman camp with his own team, but decides against it. So it looks like it's just going to be Fallen Shaman in bot lane, Impalers in top lane, unless BTG can time their Fallen Shaman camp well. Looks like they might, actually. Oh, man. We get to Look see that timing. combo again. Look at that immaculate execution, especially by Lucky as well. Knocked back into his own mind. They planned that one from a mile away, Tetris. So cool to see that. Yeah, they have full control right now with double Mercs in the bot lane, though. This is bad news for BTG. Their Fallen Shaman camp, though, is going to be much better timed than SBT's mm -hmm. was. As right now, LLK has already cleaned up a fair, the Impaler camp and is looking to try and clear up this Bruiser camp as well, this Fallen Shaman camp. So the rest of the team comes down as well. Soap is very far forward. The good start by Muradin and 619 looking for the first kill for BTG and they're able to pick up Artanis. Clean kill here by Beyond the Game, but keep in mind that it was a 5 versus 4 situation. Junkrat is still in the top lane, dealing with the uh, mercenaries. And also, these are the tiny little details, right, to prevent uh, an opponent from escaping and to securing yourself a kill. When Artanis was using Blade Dash, all the members of BTG actually spread to the side so they wouldn't give him targets to uh, connect the Blade Dash on, because doing so allows Artanis to regenerate his shields faster. So cool little details, micromanagement par excellence. And let's see what Beyond the Game can now do. They're bringing down that Blue Immortal quite handsomely already. Druid putting in some good potions. 619 Dwarf Tosses able to escape. Misaka looks for more. But overall, BTG. They are just short of the halftime show. LLK wants to get it as Soap is finally going to start working on BTG's Immortal. Yep. Halftime show hasn't started yet. SBT was able to uh, stabilize there just in time. LLK now with a shield here coming in, trying to maybe sneak in a little bit of damage in. Halftime show has started. Misaka now surrounded, but he's tanky, Garrosh, and he does not die that easily. He goes down in the end, though. Too much damage output. And BTG have control. Looking for so good Khalid from Zeratul. Dodging the Leaming abilities, too. And now oh. they've found Malfurion. LLK with a beautiful teleport. Actually gets delivered to a great position to kill off Malfurion. Unintentionally by Lucky, who's used his only escape tool to accidentally help in the killing of Malfurion. And he goes down, too. And Tetra, that was the worst case scenario for SBT. If an Artanis is committed, he can't normally escape. That was the same problem that we witnessed last week when A-Team tried to make that hero work, right? It all depends on timing and positioning. And if you have that one bad engage, if you have that one team member die in the front line, in that case, it was Misaka and Garrosh, then you oftentimes can't escape in time. But beyond the game, striking back with impunity, and securing themselves not only hero kills, but also the first immortal of the game, which surprisingly is a very, very healthy one. It is. It's got a pretty solid shield, and BTG going to hit level 8 as well. Unlikely they'll have anywhere near heroics in time for this, but they still have a nice little group up here. And remember, this is a lane where Artanis has had to come down to defend. But Dalek has some good immortal damage once they take down that shield. For second, they knew that if they left Artanis up top with Yorel, then they'd lose top lane as well. Instead, they sent Junkrat up to clean yep. that. 
so he is not here for this defense. So now it's a five-man push to this bot lane. They are committing for this fort. It also means that Arcanus, of course, adds a little bit of extra PvE damage, though. Here comes the anti-healing, the Emerald Cube from Decker King, preventing any healing value up to this point. The fort is actually falling now as well. Big, big win for BTG. Can they lock down a kill, though? LLK aggressively diving into the backline of SPT. Good toss on Loctar, though, nice who bit on far more than he can chew. Reset acquired by Lee Ming. Soap, though, is dropping down to the other side. Zeratul, worm holes away. 619's too low, and that's a one for zero. One to kill in exchange for the fort here, but BTG is still much closer to level 10. Absolutely. Like, that is a trade that I would commit to any day of the week if you get a permanent structure value. That is risky, though. SPT is already on the chase. BTG is still one man down. Actually, they're not a, uh, a man down. Our tennis on the top lane, but do they know that? I don't think Beyond the Game is immediately aware of that. So they back out. Better be safe than sorry. Quite, quite. So Soap is going to clear out this mercenary camp. He will then likely port as Eva with his shield. He's still a little bit low in terms of the health pool, so he'll go back and just top himself up once again. Well, okay. Cleaning up the minions as best as he can. His fountain might die, though. The Impaler's a little bit too hard to kill. Too much health. Okay, Artanis needs a little bit of time. Once again, we said, uh, or as we hinted towards earlier, the Suppression Pulse is going to mark a pretty significant power spike, defensive power spike for him, because with those blinds, he can actually shut down Raynor. 619 does have the Avatar unlocked now. That helps him to basically stay in combat to keep up the chase. Beautiful Nature's Cleanse here by Malfurion. Keeps Junkrat alive. And as it is, a couple of heroic abilities were used there. Sorry, only one was used by Muradin. So not the worst of outcomes, but also still something to be aware of. Also, uh, there was no Might of Nerezim. I was baited with thinking that. 619, able to draw across away. We are seeing that Void Prison, so it's going to be mm -hmm. a Divide and Conquer style here. As everyone groups up once again. Waiting for the objective to spawn. They're in the aggressive position already. So 619 and locked up. Both being very far forward. Quick start up by Misaka though, so a tiny bit of harassment on Loctar, but quick potion fixes that. Artan is in the meantime soaking in the bottom, trying to get that last ounce of experience in for his teammates so they get the heroic abilities as well. And there's the suppression pulse that we talked about. Now, with a good hit, with a good connect on Zeratul and Raynor, this basically means that for four seconds, while the blind's raging on, there won't be any significant damage coming through for BTG. So, pulls back, staying safe. BTG, like you said, in this defense position, unable to get any significant damage. Good dodge by LLK, preventing Misaka from getting any more damage. Armor applied to Reyna in this back line. Locked out. They're trying to eat this Li Ming damage so that it does not apply onto the Immortal while they wait for their opportunity to strike. Zeratul hovering around the side. And now the superior poking comes into play by SPT. They have Li Ming and Junkrat, two of the highest DPS ranged pokers you can have in the game. Urel kind of caught out of position. Zeratul gets a three-man VP going, though. What can they make out of this, though? They're not really capitalizing. Finally, they pick up the LDC. Zeratul takes good damage from the Riptire. Soap is pressuring Raynor in the back line, who is blind. It thanks to the suppression pulse. It's a three, four versus one now. Soap, he cannot take this alone, and he will get taken out. He gets taken out, making it a 2-0 in favor of BTG. Murden trying to hold the front line to maybe pose a little bit of a zoning threat to the opponents because despite losing two members, SPT's remaining team members are still very healthy. They too can also use the healing fund. So I love the move here by Beyond the Game. Instead of, you know, forcing the issue, trying to uh, poke a little more, trying to stay in combat, they utilize this short window of time in which they can go back and heal up for free without giving much away from the Immortal progress. Doctor needs to be careful. Nice Easy dodge. dodge. Easy dodge. Very nicely done as he moves into position for the rest of his team. And they're actually going to start doing the uh, Fallen Shaman camp mm -hmm. here while SPT are in the defense position. Misaka will scout this. Question is, can he do anything about it? And does he want to? Uh, Li Ming actually dropping some unintentional help here for the mercenary camp in favor of BTG, but it took a little bit of time away and Murden finds himself in trouble. The beautiful four man sleep by Decker Kane keeps the dwarf alive though. Knock up from L onto L. Okay, Loctar moving forward. Looking for his opportunity. Tranquility is dropped. Good doubles done from Murden. Riptide is going to be used as my force is engaged. In fact, it will from LLK at least. Misaka drops very low and is sniped off by Raina. By Zeratul, in fact, sorry. Yep, that was an amazing snipe by LK. Actually, around the corner when he was brought down so low by that preemptive rip tire, he now has to chuck a lot of potions by Decker Kane to basically get back in good shape. And he 
No Melody C. Yep, realize there's nothing to be done about that defense. So trying to get that immortal as low as humanly possible. Good win by BTG, but SBT is so close, Tetra, I feel like, from winning those team fights or starting to get some kills at least. They're right on the edge, but now BTG moving forward with another Immortal. SPT still on the back foot. Lucky is desperately trying to siege in to at least weaken this Fallen Shaman camp that is pushing in. But here comes the Immortal as well. This is definitely going to be a fort, but with this amount of shield, this could be a keep. Yeah, this could very well be a keep. All it takes is one kill. Maybe the VP is ready. Zeratul, if he finds that opening, if he finds two or maybe even three members, he's trying to go for it. LK cheekily just walking into there. He needs to be super careful, though. If he walks into the trap of Junkrat, he might be a goner. Stay a while and listen. Hits only really D'Artanis, and they're not able to finish him off. LLK sneaks away. D'Artanis not able to get it. The High Rock taking some damage. Anti-heal is applied. Good into the fray as the Riptire comes down. And that will be the disengage. Riptire going to be used onto the Immortal. Keep has been dropped low. Can they finish it with the Immortal this low? Muradin dives deep. That's a commitment. So burns down the Immortal, but the Keep still taking damage. D'Artanis goes down. Artanis goes down, the Void Prison still hasn't been moved yet. They could actually just zone out the defenders and then take down the keep, but they don't even need to use it. They surround their opponents one after the other and they get kill after kill. But with Li Ming in play and Junkrat and all that disengage, they realize, you know what? It's still too early to go for the court. Death timers are too low. Li Ming, all she needs is one reset to really ruin our day. So patient, uh, safe play by Beyond the Game, and I am digging it. But slowly but surely, Tetcher. Starting to look a little dire and sinister for SPT, isn't it? Yes, it is. An SPT with a keep down. They need to try and make a play. They're one keep away from optimal Dignitas position, as we do see them <laughs> burning through this Fallen Shame and trying to get any kind of counter pressure. This will be in the lane. They still have a keep, so it's not even going to mm -hmm. deep push the catapults, which means that they can't even focus on this for too long. Such a. Such a miserable situation for SPT to be in. BOE is probably the most punishing map uh, for losing a keep early. And as you said, mercenaries are only going to make things worse for them. Now they have one more chance, one more opportunity to strike at their opponents, right? Before level 16 comes online for BTG, that's when they should really try to make their play happen. They do have a couple of really dangerous tools available for themselves. They could go for a long distance swap, follow it in with a taunt. On a special target like Decker Kane, for example, that would be amazing to have. But I feel like if they take too much time, and if they let BTG soak 16, it might almost be impossible to defend this last keep. They're going to have to try, though, because otherwise this will potentially be light out. 16 is just a little bit away for BTG. So SBT, it's now or never. They are racing, and they do have very good race potential, but with levels down, damage scaling is a problem. Yeah. And as such, it is going to be the halftime show just achieved by SBT first. That's pretty close as both teams begin to move in. Once again, it's still pre-16, so now is their charge looking for 619, but he gets the avatar. Moving in with the Riptide, going to try and get to the back line. He does good damage as Lucky sieges in more as much as he can. Two catapults accumulating in the top lane, but now SBT, they have to get into that defensive position as quick as possible. Garage is low. He was actually pinged for by the enemy team, by BTG. If they had found that kill, that would have been amazing for them. As it is, though, 50% health. Nisaka needs to get some additional healing by Malfurion. Receives it just as we speak. And they find that opening, though. 16 is almost there for beyond the game, so they realize, SPT, that this is now their moment to shine. And most importantly, Tetris. They have LK with that Void Prison at the, at the ready. If they lock their opponents down, there goes one kill. They might find another one right at the get-go. LK is looking for Artanis, but Melody C, surprise out of nowhere, and said he gets oh. outplayed. LK turns it round and absolutely destroys Lee Ming. Soap will eventually die after the blind wears off because it was only a delay, really. <laughs> Stay a while just to make sure he can't run that way. Stun and Soap will fall. He is definitely buying some time, though. Yeah, he bought a little bit of time, but the same token, though, that also means that he's going to be a little staggered from his opponents, but I think that was definitely worth it. Uh, if BTG is smart here, they're definitely going to wait until everybody is full of mana, full health again, before actually finishing this Immortal. And of course, the Mercenary Camp as well. Super good macro play by them, getting as much utility, uh, sorry, as much value as possible from this one turn in. So, a little bit of time for Murden to chuck on that Healing Fountain. 
Same about Zeratul. I think he also saved a little bit of mana. So, good stuff. Good stuff indeed. And now, what can they do? Another half shield immortal. Probably the third or the third one of the game. Can they get a call with this? They're definitely going to get a keep. Nice move by LLK. Scouting out that bush. This is where people hide a lot, trying to get wraparound plays. So making sure that there was none of that sneaky SPT shenaniganry as they move in with this immortal. All right, as you said, some teams might have tried to go all in with a flank attack, but looks like SPT decides to go for the defensive route. They still believe, they still think that they can defend this and hold this. The king is probably going to fall, but can they defend the core? That is the more important question. A little bit of damage coming in from the rip tire, but everybody almost completely unharmed for BTG. LLK still has the BP. When is he going to pull the trigger? He missed the combo, at least this time. Swap onto the onto 619, but Artanis has to be tossed out. Zeratul continues to deal damage. Tranquility keeping everyone alive for the moment, but it's two catapults, an entire immortal, and all five members of BTG. And that is going to be game BTG with game number one. In clean fashion yet again, while it wasn't a perfect game in terms of kills, in terms of structures, it looks like the BTG train is back to a solid, smooth ride. Zero forts were taken by SBT. They did have their moments, especially in the early, early game uh, with Artanis finding good swaps and such. But from then on, I think Tetcher, it was just beyond the game, really dominating. They really did. And here's the question. Was that domination BTG being woken up after their draw earlier? Or are the one just that good? Were the one able to rumble BTG and able to make those plays? But either way, mm -hmm. BTG, they were given comforts again. Once again, Loctar was allowed onto yeah. his Yorel and was able to just make so many plays of it. And I start to I'm really thinking that's starting to be a problem. I really think so too. Uh, as good as winning with Yorel is, guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to make them vulnerable? Lack of practice on other heroes when Loctar might be on slightly squishier heroes, uh, like the Leoric, for example. He didn't look nearly as convincing against uh, the one in that game. So I'm almost 100% sure certain of the fact that we're going to see a new royal ban while i wouldn't say that you know lockter necessarily is the dominating factor he adds so much and feels so comfortable so take that away from him have an easier time in the soul lane and try to find yeah. your chances there exactly completely agree we already we saw there that druid was completely fine on his hero so mm -hmm. that's not the issue we thought that might be a hero pool thing uh, maybe maybe he still does prioritize heroes, some heroes too much, but either way, he still played good. But having that playmaking ability on Loctar and that survivability, even though he was first blood, is still a little bit too scary for me. Yeah, and that's, you know, on the other hand, a little bit of a chance for uh, BTG as well. If SPT were to ban the URL, which I still would heavily recommend to them, uh, maybe that is their opportunity to pick the white main. Uh, that could really be the trick, maybe. the trap that they want to put their enemies into. Um, but yeah, interesting question, right? Was the one just really so good? Or has BTG smoothed it out a little bit? They were dominating the one in game one as well in the earlier series today. It's not an automatic uh, guarantee that they're going to do the same thing here in game two for SBT, though. It's only one way we can find out, though, as we will be preparing for game number two as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is a MVP from that one, though? Ooh, MVP in that game, to me, would probably have to be, um, honestly, I think 619 did one hell of a job on the Muradin and staying alive. Completely agreed. Very much agreed there. So I am down for that.